I want to talk about interfaces between languages. Uh, and when I was thinking about this group and looking at some of the titles of the, of the talks, I thought perhaps we might have a situation where everyone was getting up and saying, my language is better than everybody else's, and therefore you should all use my language. Well, clearly, uh, I, clearly to me anyway, that's not the case. Uh, and so in, in a sense, I'm going to preach to the choir a little bit, because one of the points that I really think uh, we can take from the nearly 40-year history of, of this software is that uh, it's much more important to be able to make use of whatever the good tools are out there. And what we should be thinking of doing, amongst other things, is to simplify and uh, ameliorate the process of using a, a variety of languages. Now, the, uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about that in general terms, and then I have to. What Sorry, we're having some wireless issues. Just, just give me a second. Can I see your wireless? Can I see your wireless? <laughs> That's a green line on there. Yes, I've been trying to. Uh, <laughs> okay, are we on air? We sound like we're on air. Speaking of technology. Um, OK, so uh, and then I'm going to just take advantage of the excuse to talk a little bit about some things that I've been doing in my own research over the last, over the last few months, which are at least marginally related. OK, so next technology problem. <laughs> Help. Uh, OK, how about? How do I go to the, oh, OK. <laughs> it just does it its own time, I guess. Um, so the, <clears throat> where are we here? Yeah, OK, fine. Um, so to, to go back uh, nearly 40 years, 39 years, to when we first, the group of us at Bell Labs first started to work on what became the S language. One thing that I wanted to point out uh, here in, in this context is that the idea of interfaces was exactly uh, what was in our mind at the time. Surprisingly enough, although this was 1976, we had quite a, a good collection of, of algorithms, particularly and only in those days in Fortran subroutine library terms, for things like, as we just mentioned, the singular value decomposition and a variety of numerical tools, uh, random number generation, and indeed graphics. So in contrast to what might seem to be the case, it wasn't the matter that we wanted to start from scratch and, and invent a language that would do everything for you. It was that we had a collection of tools, and this will now start to sound familiar, but the interface between the users and the tools was not what it should be. In those days, the interface was that you formed a little team and you wrote uh, some main, Fortran main programs, and then a few hours later, you got your results back and found that you'd misspelled something, and then you iterated that process. So uh, one of our goals, the, one of the two or three main goals at that time, was to provide an interactive interface, which was much more convenient for the users to existing tools and to tools that would be embedded uh, in the future. Now, what was different, of course, in, in those days was that uh, what you were interfacing to was very simple. It was basically Fortran library. But nowadays, oh, I'm, I'm going to, I see. Do I see? I'm not sure. Ah. OK. So nowadays, as we've been discussing, in fact, already, uh, the selection of things that you're interfacing to uh, is much greater. And what we now need, what we now have, are the capability of making use of a variety of things. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that just from a, a very narrow point of view, which is my point of view, which is working from R to other, other languages and other, other technologies. Uh, some of that is, has been around for a long time. In particular, a number of you have probably in, used the DBI interface to go from R to relational databases. Um, and all of that, I think, is, is a key asset. I think it's an important reason for the success of R and Python and many other languages today is that there is this capability for people to make use of a variety of uh, a variety of languages, but from within a consistent model. And I'm going to talk a little, just a little bit about one view of that. 
So one of the things that, that uh, this got going was when I, I'm, as always, in the process of writing a book. And I wanted the last part of the book to be about interfaces. And so I started describing all the various interfaces from R to other languages. And I realized that although there was a lot there and, and it was very good, what we, we do need to think about, and uh, from my perspective, is having a consistent and simple interface where the vast majority of users can use all of these tools without going too far away from their comfortable initial model. And I'll talk just about people whose comfortable initial model is, is programming in R. And so that's, that's what I'm gonna talk about for a few minutes about now. So, um, as, as I think most of you know, uh, there has been this explosion that amazes me in, in the use and, and variety of applications of R. And the reason for it is very simple. It's what everybody has done, what everybody has contributed in terms of a very large number of packages and uh, areas and interfaces to different kinds of data and different models for computing. So what I would like to do in my thinking right now is to look at how uh, we might improve the interface process from R to these, to these languages. So let me just start back by uh, a slide. Every time I, I talk about R in uh, a course, like we, the courses we give here at Stanford or at other locations, I tend these days to uh, hang it off three principles, which I think are the, the basic principles that underlie R and have since the beginning. I call them the object, function, and interface principles. So the object principle is very simple, that everything that exists in R is, is an object. Uh, everything, everything. Uh, and that means that uh, there is a, a, a standard way of thinking about uh, underlying data, whether it be fun data in the language, data working with the language, or whatever. Everything that exists is an object. And everything that happens in R to those objects is a function call. So you have this uh, very simple, I think, helpful way of, of looking at it. And, and uh, the third principle, which is the one I'm obviously going to talk about now, is the interface principle. And that just says that if you have a challenging situation, a challenge for computations or something you need to do that's not easy, and you discover that there's some good software out there in the world for it, uh, why not try to make an effective interface from, in this case, from R to that software rather than re-implementing it? Now, as I say, I may be preaching to the choir here, but this is in contrast to what I interpret as some of the descriptions of recent programming languages, which are trying to argue that uh, my language is so much better than yours that you really should reprogram it in, in my language. To, to repeat, that was never our point of view uh, with the original S language, and it's certainly very far away from the current one now. So uh, the, the kinds of interfaces that, uh, that from our, uh, are, are, are of interest here, I, I divide up in several categories. First of all, you have subroutine interfaces, and as, uh, uh, as Renee was, was talking about there's some very good interfaces from R to C++ and, uh, and other subroutine languages. Um, and th those, are, those are certainly uh, something that I think is very important for us. And I was actually very encouraged from what Renee is talking about uh, to see a lot of interest in that in both directions and from, from those languages to R as well. What I've been thinking about lately is more uh, to languages that have their own, their own uh, evaluator, their own interactive processing, uh, such as Python, Java, uh, Julia, JavaScript, and so forth. And in the idea of interfacing from R to those, there are two situations. One is that the, uh, the other language is embedded uh, within the R process. So that in fact, although you're dealing with a language evaluator, that's being done through a subroutine interface and uh, through uh, a technique by, uh, by which the, the commands in the other language are executed with, from within the R process. Uh, in contrast, the other way of doing this is to think of a connected interface, which is one in which you have separate processes and that you communicate to that by writing back and forth. 
So there, there are a number of examples, especially of embedded interfaces right now. Uh, and I think they're both important. And my goal, as you're going to see, is to provide a uniform way of dealing with all of those interfaces. Embedded interfaces, of course, tend to win for performance as long as you can work within that one process. But the connected interfaces, which are not as widely used right now, uh, are, have definite advantages as well. They're much more flexible. Uh, they deal with the, the language rather than with an implementation of it. Uh, and in, in the context of, of this conference, they're one way of dealing uh, with large amounts of data which don't naturally fit into the, to the R standard R model. So what I've been trying to do uh, is to, and this is kind of a preview of, of some packages that I hope to, should be forthcoming shortly. Uh, I want to take a look at this interface situation and provide a structure for the interfaces which is uh, more uniform and more uh, effective in terms of who has to know what. So uh, what I think we want in these interfaces is, is, first of all, that the end user, the user who's using an application package in the, in the context of R, should be essentially unaware of the fact that things are being done in another system or in another language. Uh, they are going to be operating using an application package, one of the thousands of them out there, which presumably has decided that it needs to do some computation in another language. For the ap application package developer, uh, we want to have a, a clear, clean structure which uh, allows them to communicate with the other language through a few simple tools. And uh, the other two goals for interfaces, to my mind, first of all, you, you want the potential uh, software in the other language, in the server language, to be unrestricted. You want to be able to deal with any function, any kind of data in the other language. And on the R side, you want to be able to communicate back from that, uh, from that uh, server language any kind of uh, appropriate class of data in, in R. So uh, what I've been doing is developing some new packages, uh, which hopefully will give us a, a way to do this a little bit better than we can do now. The idea is that there'll be one uh, interface package currently called XR, which manages the interfaces to all the, the appropriate other languages. Uh, if you've used the DBI thing, this is somewhat similar to the DBI idea, but hopefully a little, a little more structured. Within that, then there'll be individual interfaces to particular languages. The ones that exist right now are, are to Julia and to Python. So for the end user uh, programmer, uh, you still are dealing with pure R rather than being aware of the other languages. And that's done through having objects and functions and classes in R which are in fact proxies for the other language. It's, uh, back here to those three principles, everything is an object and everything that happens to it is a function call and this is a way of making those objects and function calls transparently deal with the other language. The application package uses some, some tools that are, are structured as far as possible independently of, of the two languages involved which define the, 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 uh, the various proxies to, to computations in the other language. So the way that we get uh, to, to use anything in the server language is very simply through this idea of proxies. And the way that this organization deals with any uh, R class is by having a, a mechanism within a, a stand, the standard, the XR standard structure for representing arbitrary R objects. Um, so that, in the, in the very short time available, is, is just a very quick overview of what I'm hoping will be something that, that uh, people in the R community can use uh, in the near future to extend and improve on our ability to deal with multiple languages at the same time. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we have just one slot for a question on R in the future. Anybody would like to, to take that chance? If not, okay. Uh, I'm Marcin Marcy. from Snowflake. Uh, I have a question. One of the problems of integrating R with, and other actually libraries with uh, databases, especially distributed databases, is the distribution. So a lot of uh, libraries are focusing on a single node uh, processing and 
distributed databases have problems and either they re-implement things or uh, they cannot take uh, advantage of the distributed nat nature of, of their engines. So are you incorporating that somehow in your extension? Uh, well, uh, first of all, uh, there's a lot of very interesting work going on. We've heard about some of it today and, and there's a lot more. So I'm not proposing this as, as a universal solution. But there was one reason why I wanted to emphasize the option of using connected interfaces as opposed to embedded interfaces. Because once you have a connected interface, you've got much more flexibility in terms of the model on the other side. 